just like that back together. I was seriously concerned we were not gonna make die 29 in time. I posted that last video and Kyle Nelson from Modern Round Motor reached out and they were a huge help. They got us new crank, they got us new rods, they helped swap the pistons over, they did some prep work on the block so I could haphazardly assemble the thing. And we got it all back together. I do not know if we would've been done on time without their help. Uh, so just huge shout out to those guys. They are local and I'm a huge supporter of keeping the local speed shops going. So if you need anything, make sure to reach out to them. They have a ton of stuff in stock. Other than that, let's roll the video. Here we are. I didn't make the video that I said I was gonna make about putting motor together because, I don't know, I don't really know how to put a motor together, so why would I make a video about it? So we put new crank, two new rods, all new bearings, including the cam bearings, um, and slammed it back together. I don't know if it's gonna run, it might. I have not tried it yet. I wanted to save the experience for all of us to enjoy together. first day I think I got the old seal on the oil filter still so now that's covering oil you know I was under I was putting a new filter on I was like oh, I didn't check to make sure the gasket came off and I thought I always check and it never happens I'm not even gonna worry about it I think it's still on there yeah yep that you only need one not two take two Cars. Today we're going to talk about how you can get yourself a junkyard motor and get installed in your car for next to nothing. Stand by. Come on. How much, how much do these things cost? Is it really 500 bucks? No, it's not even close to $500. Okay, I really do want to talk about the actual cost of a stock bottom end motor versus a legitimate, like you bought it from somebody that showed up in a crate and got his long block. I've been thinking about this a lot lately as I'm rebuilding mine, wondering, was this really worth it at the end of the day? I get a lot of questions about it, like what'd you start with? What'd you put in it? Have you had good luck with it? If you watch any of the videos, you know that I used an L33, which is an aluminum 5.3. This is an LC9, which is an aluminum 5.3, but it's like a true Gen 4, mine's like a half breed. Um, so either way, gotta start with the junkyard motor. So that's like 700 bucks we're gonna call it. I paid a lot more than that. I shouldn't say a lot more, but I think mine was like 900 by the time I got out because it had like a hundred and some dollar core on it and I think they wanted 750. So that was like a 200,000 mile tested good compression type deal. So you gotta start with that then you're gonna need a couple parts. So there's some parts that I'm gonna list off here that could be debatable whether or not they actually need to be replaced. So my first motor, the one that died last year, that had a stock oil pump, I didn't change it. I, I don't even think I took it out. So 
I'm gonna put on this list an oil pump. So this one, when I rebuilt it, I used a Melian 10355, which is like a high volume, high pressure pump. There's some debate whether or not that's the correct pump to use, um, but that's what's in mine and that's what I also put in Matt's car. So that's gonna run you like $180, depending on where you get it, which one you get. Um, I think the valve train is the most important thing in a stock bottom end motor that you're trying to make, let's say a thousand, thousand to 1100. I have a BTR camshaft and I also have a trick flow camshaft. Right now the trick flow camshaft is in the car. Um, I'm gonna say that's about $225, depending on what you go with. I'm, there's obviously a ton of people you can use. You use like Baker, you can use Lil John. well, <laughs> kinda. I'm not sure if you still can, but like BTR, trick flow, Summit cams, which I think are basically a Elgin or a trick flow grind. But either way, um, there's a ton of cams you can pick. Um, that, I'm not a cam expert, I'm not gonna recommend which one you should use or shouldn't use. Uh, you're gonna need lifters. I used all seven lifters back when you could still get them. Right now you can't really find them. Um, but anything along those lines is gonna be about $150. Um, <clears throat> my car actually has Gen 5 lifters, which are like 50 pound difference in height, but same thing. You're also gonna need um, valve springs that can handle it. So I went with the 685 Ultimates from BTR, probably overkill. You could probably run like 660s. You could probably run like Pac-12 18s. I don't know. I'm sure the shit all works, but that's what I used. So that ended up running me about about $360 for the kit and that had new seals and retainers and springs and blah, blah, blah. So once you got that in, the last thing you need is push rods. I use BTR's hardened push rods. Push rods are running like $100 depending where you get them and what you want. So realistically, I would say like $75 to $125 depending on what you end up going with. Uh, once you got the heads put together, you need like a multi-layer steel gasket, which is what I use. Um, I've heard of guys running stock gaskets. I've heard of all sorts of different gaskets. I run LS9s, which the bore on it is made for like a six liter, I believe. So the firing ring versus the head gasket doesn't really fit the way it should, but um, I haven't had any issues and I know a lot of people haven't. So debatable, but those are running $90 a pair, um, at least for BTR's equivalent. Uh, it's the exact same thing. That's what I use as the BTR equivalent of an LS9. Probably want head studs. Um, there's a lot of guys running stock head bolts with tremendous success. So whether or not it's a necessity, I don't know. I chose to put ARP head studs in mine. I didn't use the super fancy ones. I used like $360 ones. Um, so far they've been great. I haven't snapped one off or anything ridiculous like that. So those are gonna run you right about 360 bucks. Then you gotta figure in like some, some gasket maker and some random O-rings and stuff from the parts store. So once that's all said and done, if you add it up, it's like 20, ends up being like 2350 or so um, by the time you have a long block. Now there's obviously a ton of other stuff that could come into account here. Like I'm not talking about intakes or headers or blah, blah, blah. Just the long blocks. Um, I kind of dug around a little bit. I can't afford to buy like a complete long block and just bolt it in. Um, but Thompson offers one. It's like, it's probably the most comparable thing I find. It's aluminum 5.3. It's got rods, pistons, all the good stuff in it, and they get like $7,600 for it. So I would say it's probably the closest comparison I could find of, like I wanna make 1050 reliably versus what I just went through uh, with the stock bottom end stuff. So at the end of the day, I figure I can blow this thing up two and a half times. Looking back, it's probably not that good at odds, um, seeing as I made it 10 passes in on the first one, which completely self-induced. I don't. I really don't think it was gonna come apart um, if we hadn't smashed that pan. So how long a stock bottom end motor is actually good for? I confidently feel like they shouldn't have an issue. Um, with the right tune up in them and a couple of the right parts, a little care for them, maybe not 35, maybe 25, correct timing, correct fuel, things like that. I really think they can live pretty reliably right around that thousand horse mark. Um, so I'm gonna continue on down this road for now. Um, if you have $7,500 and you're building a race car, I would probably recommend just buying one. Might get better odds out of it. But for what we do here, I'm gonna stick with this stuff. Uh, one of the reasons that I chose to do a stock bottom end motor, it wasn't because I was like trying to be cheap or anything, but at the end of the day, I'm not qualified to build a motor. I'm not even confident in this one I just rebuilt in the Camaro. I, it might explode before I even get the trailer. It might make one pass. Um, but I feel a lot better wrecking stock parts than I do if I spent like three grand on internals and then tried to put it together, which I don't have the equipment to do correctly. Uh, and then that explodes. So that's kind of why, that's kind of why I've chosen the road I am. 
Um, one of the things I hate about my old small block and my old big block was that I couldn't do the maintenance on them. You're always at the mercy of an engine builder, um, or timeline, stuff like that. So that's why we have the program we do. Super boring video, but I think it answers a couple questions I get on the whole deal. So hopefully you find this helpful. Um, I think over, I don't have time to do it tonight before I load the video, but um, I might, just rambling. I'll upload some part numbers to go with the video if you have any questions. So other than that, stand by. I'm gonna put this thing in the box, head to I-29, blow it up. I am gonna do a huge, huge fucking wheelie first round. That is my only game plan is to put this thing on the bumper.